Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today we are taking a look at the Siamese Mauser. I believe this is a model 1903 and this was made in Japan for Siam, currently known as Thailand. So This is an interesting rifle. It is based on the Mauser 98. It has a couple differences. Thailand wanted Mausers, understandably, but they didn't want to pay the Mauser price, so they paid, I think it was a Kawa, Kaska, uh, uh, Arsenal in Japan, uh, to make it for them. And we're going to go through the features back to front, and I think it's an interesting rifle. It's a little bit different. Um, can't quite shoot it as much as I'd like, but... Let's go through all that. Let's start back to front, as I typically do. And some of these things, some of these interesting features, some of these, the reasons why I can't shoot it will become more obvious as we go through the review. First of all, it is a relatively long rifle. Do not have the barrel length uh, memorized, but it's approximately 30 inch barrel. Uh, the gun has some weight to it. It's probably 9 or 10 pounds. And it just has kind of a big beefy appearance and kind of feel to it. It feels like a good hefty service rifle. Okay, model 1903. Start the back. So we have a butt plate here. And this is your first uh, sign of the Thai character. It's interesting. Uh, I can't read that, but um, very nice to look at. A little bit different than the characters we're used to looking. And we have a steel butt plate and we have, what's this? Oh, okay. What's that? Little thing the other way. And we have a little... Oh, God, I can't tilt this here. So you would think there'd be some kind of cleaning tool here. This is actually um, a muzzle cap. A little spring-loaded muzzle cap to cover the muzzle or the barrel of the gun to protect it from dirt. However, it is entirely possible to shoot the gun with this on. <laughs> and it will come flying off so I'm not sure how good an idea that is I'll leave, leave this on the side and we'll get there back there later uh, nice wood we have a sling swivel over here trigger, trigger guard magazine floor plate, interesting the magazine floor plate magazine floor plate pops out pretty easily, just hit this release right here, this is just for the floor plate, put this down, and the basically the magazine spring uh, pops right out. We'll leave that out for now. Makes it easier to work with the rest of the gun. So this is very much in the style of the Mauser 98. We have a bolt handle here. We have the three position Mauser safety, so that's fire. This is, what was it? oh, it's a little stiff there. This is so you cannot fire the gun, but the, can work the bolt. And this is just locked. Can't pull the trigger, can't work the bolt. Let's get more of a look at some of those tie characters. Just nice to look at, a little bit different. The bolt comes out like a Mauser. Might not be directly interchangeable with, with Mauser parts, but oh. but it is very much the Mauser style. Now this gun also has a very interesting feature, more interesting features. This is a kind of a sliding dust cover. It is not automatic. You would have to open and close it manually. But this does, this would do a good job of keeping dirt out of the action. I don't think this is easily removable from what I can tell. There's nothing really. It, it, it's riding on rails. I don't think there's any way to easily remove this. Maybe short of taking it out of the stock. Um, There is those 
that's the um, four cannonballs. That's for the uh, Japanese arsenal that make this thing. Is I believe it's an arsenal in Tokyo. Please feel free to correct me on that one. Anyway, the sliding dust cover is kind of a cool idea. More of the characters here. And, you know, the gun is graduated meters. However, the meters are not in the numerals we're accustomed to seeing. They're in Thai. So that's interesting to look at. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything underneath here myself. Let's take a look. I uh, honestly <laughs> didn't know there's any anything underneath here or not. But no, it's just a little bit of a crack there. A little bit of a crack there. Going forward, we have a nice, decent handguard here. A lot of the barrel is exposed at this point. The front. Sling swivel. A little bit of a hmm, a little bit of metal was exposed there. That looks like it's part of the design. It's an interesting choice. Uh, bayonet lug, and there is the muzzle. There is the front sight. There is the muzzle right there. So we'll try the muzzle cap. Let's see. Uh, it goes on like this. Push down. I mean, it does work. It does. Do what it's oh snaps there. It stays on very securely. However, this doesn't stop. This doesn't prevent the gun from firing, and this appears to be more narrow than the bullet. You know, than the the barrel. So this will fly right off if you fire it. So I'm not sure how good of an idea that is. Mm. So let's take a moment. Put this back. Probably best that it's not used. To be honest. Okay, let's see, we'll put the uh, magazine floor plate back in. And we'll put the bolt back in. Just like a Mauser. That's cool, that's cool. I like it. Now, So when the Mauser rifles, when the Siamese Mauser first developed, um, it was a model of 1903, and they have their own designation for the Thai calendar. Um, Thai, the Thai calendar is offset by like 5,000, um, about 5,000 years. 500, 500, 500 years. Sorry, the Thai calendar is offset for about 500 years. When the Siamese Mauser first came out, um, it was made in. The 8mm by 50, I think I guess that's rimmed, uh, Siamese Mauser cartridge, or just the 8mm by 50 rimmed cartridge. And that was at one point updated to a Spitzer cartridge. So the original was a, a round nose cartridge, and the updated one was a Spitzer cartridge, and that was 8 by 52 so You have to be careful if you do buy one of these Siamese Mausers, that you have the you know what chamber it is. This is most definitely eight by fifty, and I have gone and purchased custom, basically custom Buffalo Arms ammo for this gun. And you can tell by the case it's made from 4570 ammo. So they've taken 4570 ammo, and they've basically just reformed it. It has such a large rim here. And I have shot this gun. And I will tell you that this gun groups terribly. <laughs> this is like $3 a round. <laughs> uh, and I was trying to get groups out of it at 25 yards. And I was the, the shots were all over the place. And after the first 10 rounds, I just kind of stopped. You know, I just stopped. Because the, the groups are just so poor, I just I just stopped shooting. Because this is very expensive ammo, and I was like, all right, let's take a break. Because I don't want to I don't want to like spend 20 rounds to figure out where this gun shoots. I Meanwhile, just I just wasted sixty dollars. Huh. 
so I really just shot it the one time, and I bought, I think I bought, I don't know if I had two or three boxes. Um, I might have just bought two. So I either shot 10 rounds or I shot 30 rounds, depending if I had two or three boxes, I forgot. So I still have 30 rounds of this ammo, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. It's just so expensive. It's $3, $3 a shot. And, uh, you know, thank you for Buffalo Arms for making it, even though it was very expensive um, ammo basically custom ammo um, I was kinda glad to have it because it's hard to get and if you if you look on the Buffalo Arms website they might have this and they might list it as out of stock but if you contact them if you call them or email them I said hey can you make some Siamese ammo they'll probably do it you know assuming you, you know what's what chambering you have if you have either the 8x50 original cartridge or the 8x52 updated cartridge if you if you know they should be able to make it for you Now, can I recommend this gun for anything? Well, honestly, you're really not going to shoot it all that much. The ammo is hard to find. It's basically custom-made ammo. And unless you're making it yourself, you're going to have a hard time. Uh, but as a collectible, yeah, it's kind of fun. It's not a shooter, really. Like, it's, that's what I'm getting at. It's not really a shooter because um, it's going to be a little hard to get the ammo. But just as a cool little niche thing that, you know, maybe some people overlook. You know, you don't always have to shoot every single gun all the time. You can have guns that are just collectible or interesting to you. Um, and yeah, the Siamese Mauser, for me, kind of filled that niche. Niche? Niche. Don't have the bayonet, don't have the bayonet that comes with it. Um, just quickly looking over certain things, anything that stands out. No, it's just a Mauser with a couple interesting features like that muzzle cap, like this dust cover here. It's a Mauser. Got a lot of weight to it. Or maybe a little more weight than you expect. So I think that will just about do it. This is Steven from the Even Steven channel. Please do all that like, share, and subscribe. And, uh, I don't know if, if you have any questions. I don't know how well I'll be able to answer it. Because uh, I can't speak Thai. I can't read or speak Thai. But, you know, any questions, I'll answer them the best I can. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you, and goodbye.